So, because I had few uh, content on the basics of the functional programming, basics of syntax of L, so I'm just figuring out whether to cover that or skip that. Skip. Skip? skip? Okay, right. And uh, do you want to see do you want to see a demo or do you want to see a live coding? Like I just want to know. I plan for do some kind of a live coding. Is that fine? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right. So my name is Jairam and I started uh, doing some kind of functional programming maybe three or four years back. Now kind of work with my teams to adopt some of these practices. So that's in short. The long one is in the slide. All right, so typical of UI development, how many of you faced probably a choice to make some decisions or made some of these errors? All right, so even recently, like probably a month back, we did what is on the right hand side. We, in work, we chose React as a JavaScript framework. So it happens all the time. <laughs> all right. So in that context, let's let's peek into peek into Elm, and the focus is on the architecture. So I'm not be covering many of the functionalities or syntax and other things. So mainly about the core, the heart of it. How does what what is the Elm, Elm architecture with respect to UI development? So the prerequisites, yeah, I, I want to do a recap, which I'll skip now. So it was the basics of the functional programming, which I'll skip and directly go into the Elm part. So I'm just going to skip all these things. So you guys are aware of all map, flat map, filter, fold, partial application. Fine, I'll skip all these things. All right, so let's, that brings us into Elm. So I'll start talking about some of the literals, like how you do, I think <coughs> there are four of, four of you who have already done Elms for the sake of the rest of all of us. So it's about defining values, right? So you, you can see that it's in, how do you define an int, char, string, bool? So essentially, it's so the format, you have a name and a type. So if you have seen previous sessions, Haskell, like double colon, so it's single, or, or I don't know, it's Haskell or something else. And the name equals value. So that's the defining type signature and the actual the value. And it's, so these are, these are literals. So now what do you do when you go for functions? Uh, it's it's not something, it's exactly the same. So there's no difference between how do you define a literal versus how do you de define a function. So this is an example. So you have an ad which <coughs> takes two parameters and returns a third one. So it's the same as defining values. But I said that it takes two parameters, right? I mean, typically if you see it, it's, it's a, okay. So add one and three of the parameters, which is not true. All functions take one parameter. Right, so here is the example. So it's an add. It takes one parameter, the first integer, which returns your function, which takes another integer, which returns an integer. Then if you pass two, then you, would, you get the final one. So this is all functions take single parameter. It's same as currying. And of course, how do you invoke is by white space, there's no parentheses. So add one space three. So that's how you invoke the functions. And of course, records. So you can create custom records. You can give a name for it. If you don't want to give a name, you have to always use that structure within the curly braces every time. So it's a good idea to give a name, give an alias. And you can define your own types, or it's called union types, where in which, let's say in this case, it's a, your type is music. So it's vocals or acoustic or other. And string, you see the, the string is a type parameter. That means other, which holds a string. Clear? Yeah? All right. There are certain other things when you talk, when you read about Elm or watch some other, uh, go to the tutorial and other things, like strong static type check. So probably pure JavaScript developers, it's a cool thing, but for others, it probably is not. It's most of the other programming language that does it. Other statically typed languages. <laughs> and another important thing is the module version dependencies. So for example, if you are using a third party module and it, they release a newer version, and if there is a impacting change or back, with, if they make a change which breaks the backward compatibility, Elm will force them to upgrade the 
major version. So you do, you are guaranteed that if you declare dependencies in your L package or JSON, it's going to work. You are not going to have a cross version dependencies issues. And finally, the debugger in the Elm were in which literally you can go and replay all the events through the life cycle of your app and then see. So you can go back and then see today's talk, uh, Brian Hunter, right? Yeah. yeah, so he showed that Mario. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. All right. So this is a quick check on Elm. So it's like basic intro to syntax so that you're going to see some code. So at least you can read the code. So that's the objective of just introducing this very quickly. So this is the core part of the session, and there's only one slide that I have, and that's that's what it is. Rest, there are other slides, but this is this is what this is about. So this is about model view, new controller, it's update, and here the view is a function, update is a function, model is a record or struct or thinking about uh, object oriented like class. Probably would not use the word class. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a record, right? So we have a model. So this encapsulates all the data that your application or your web page needs. And of course, it's a view. Like this is the representation of the data. So how do you represent that? And there is an update function. So the green ones are the functions. And of course, you have a user. You have an external world. You have the browser, uh, which does something. Like all the external world and users are using your system. They are interacting with it. The first step is that generates a message and the existing model. So this message and the model becomes an input to update function. So what update function is supposed to do it, take a message, take the current model and give a new model along with a command to the runtime. All right. So this could be something like somebody clicked on something, somebody clicked on a button. So that generates that first message, and it takes the current runtime takes a current model, pass it on to update function. It generates a new model, which could be same as before, or it could be some changes based on what it is supposed to do, and generates a command. And this command in, in turn gets executed, can generate another message. And that cycle continues. Right? Is it clear till now? All right. Ultimately, the Elm runtime will use the model. I'll come to that on a how. Oh, in this, yeah, even to call the uh, update function, Elm runtime will pick the model and then pick the message and call. But from a uh, logical point of view, uh, model is, like, it's like update function takes model as an input. Like, let's not worry about like, who passes it right at, at, at this point of time. So now we didn't talk about the model on the right hand side, right? Like what the the one which update function generated. So that gets passed on to the view, and view sends a HTML data along which can send some messages to the runtime. So what this HTML message means is, probably it's a, a, uh, it's a bunch of HTML content or the DOM structure which can send messages to update. For example, what happens if somebody types in a uh, text box, somebody clicks a button, somebody selects a drop down, all those are messages that is coming into. We'll see that in the, in the code. So this is in runtime, who, who actually receives all these things and orchestrates the entire stuff. And of course, the application developer, what you focus on your view, model, and update. Right, so we have model as a record. Message is generally it's, are the types like you are you, are, you define your types, uh, and update is a function, and view is a function. So update takes in a message, takes in a model, gives you back a new model and a command message, and view takes in a model and gives you back an HTML content. Yeah. Oh no, that's generated with the view. So I just. View is green, so I made that green. That's all. There's no other significance. Yeah. Command message. So it's like, let's say, okay, you click on a button, right? I'll tell you the exact use case that you're going to see now. You click on a button. Let's say it's to post a message, right? Now you want to um, invoke an API as part of that, and that invocation and get the response and update the view at some point of time in future. 
So what you tell L Elm runtime is run this command, and the command will tell what is the HTTP method, what is the URL, how do you handle the response, like uh, what is the decoder, like if you, if you respond to JSON, how to decode into your special records and all those kind of things. Since it has the instruction, it doesn't do anything, it doesn't actually make the API call, that runtime uh, does it. But in certain scenarios, there may not be any API. For example, it's just a drop down selection, you just want to show, reflect the selection in the UI, then there is no command. So command is depending on what action user is performing. So we'll see that in an example. Update is a every, so here on the right hand side, everything is a pure function. So pure function means you cannot have any side effects. So if you invoke an API in update, you're, you're doing, you're changing the world. You're changing something outside the outside world. That's you're causing a side effect. And you cannot, okay, yeah. There are other things, uh, testability and all those, all those factors, yeah. This is fine, I mean this, this is the whole purpose of this talk is just one this single slide. Let's all demo and code and other things. So can I move on? Yep. Cool. So let's, uh, I'm hoping that the network, everything is fine. So let's get our hands dirty. So we'll go through what we are going to build. So there is a service running which I'm going to use, which allows to, um, for somebody to connect to it and send uh, messages to other users who are connected to the same service. So it's just a dummy demo, I mean not dummy, the real service, but it's just a demo service. And we, uh, I already have an app which actually purposely built for this purpose so that it doesn't allow you to send, it allows, it shows only, it connects and it only shows you the messages you got, you can't send it to anybody, okay? For this purpose, let's assume that I'm going to build another page which allows only sending, it doesn't, I don't want to combine at this point, I'll, I'll do that later after this. So to separate it out, I have something which receives the message and displays it. So we are, we are going to build something using which you want to send it, right? So now how that is, let's take a very simple case. So I, I specify an user ID, then I want to type the message what I want to send, and I'll click on send. And this has four aspects to it, four parts, of, parts to it. One is the recipient, whom I am sending the message, other one is the actual message itself, what I need to send, and the send button or an action that user needs to take. And this, this part is where I want to show the status, like okay, sending the message or send failed or send successful, blah, 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 any kind of status information that you want to show to the user. So this is what we need to build, all right? So let's do it. So. So now I'll mirror it, all right. Okay, you can see that, right? That's pretty readable. Yep. Reduce a bit because, is this fine? All right, so three things, right? Model, view, update. So that's all we are focusing on. So let's go to, okay, before that I just want to show you. Okay, so I'm going to connect. This is the app which just connects and receives, and uh, displays the messages that are received. So let me connect as myself. Okay, so I don't have any message now. I just connected and displayed, right? All right, so now let's see the model. So we have, okay, first we'll see the mes messages that, uh, that are applicable here. So the way to think about the first thing is the very straightforward thing is notify. That means if I click on send button, it has to do something. So that's one message. The other things which will become clear as you start doing this is, <coughs> if user types recipient, right? In typical way, what we do is, okay, I feel something, delimit dot blah dot value, in JavaScript we get that. So this, here everything happens as messages. So as I type on the recipient field or as I type on the message field, it, it has to send a message to the um, 
Now the runtime will send a message to update function. So I need to have types for those fields. So let me call it as recipient, I think it's called ready, or and message ready. Right? So this covers recipient, message, send button. We had that one more thing which showed the status, like it's notifying, notify successful. So let's call it as status. Let's call it as status. Okay, okay. Status may or may not be there, right? Because when initially there is no status, only when user is performing some actions it is. So how do you do that is maybe status, right? So it may be nothing or it may be, it may have some value. So that's nice. So I have one error. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. <coughs> no, not here. That's all it is. Okay, confused with the model. So next is the model. So model, it's already pre-populated the recipient and the message is pre-populated. So here we need to add status is maybe string, I may have a string. And there is something which is very peculiar about, or peculiar, the, the syntax of the API is that, so this is the actual API that we are going to call. So I'll just show you, so this needs a message and a sender. Who is, who is sending this message, right? So we'll have a sender as well of, as well as here, <coughs> sender, so sender as string, right? So we completed our message as well as the model. So notify response body, so we have to see, so notify response here it is, it gives you a status as well as the string. So let me add that over here. So it's called client ID colon string, fine. So we are completing this. All right, so now here you get, I just wanted to show you all these compiler errors and all those kind of things. So here you see that it looks like a function definition, yeah, it gives a message. Essentially the problem here it is, this is decoding only one field, so we need to, come on. All right, to add another field over here, field, client ID, json dot decode dot string, and that should go away. Okay, and I have to use map two, right? That is gone, okay, so now, I have defined most of the stuff that I need in my message and model and um, I have my update view function and update function. Update doesn't do anything right now. So view is just doing some to do note. So you see the error over here. That's because our model has changed and we have not updated it. Now the model has four parameters. So I need to say that, okay, the third one is nothing. And fourth one is a string. All right, so now we are all set. So at now, let's let's see what happens. So we'll go here. So you can do a well. What happened? All right, let me run the reactor. So we'll see how it looks like now. So send. Okay, it has only to do, nothing else. So we can actually see here that we, this is our model. We have everything empty, there is nothing over here. Right. So now we will continue to add the view part now. So we go here, view, let me save some time and copy it. So view, 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 name. All right. All right, so 
So, there are some helper functions defined elsewhere. So, I still have one error. Ah, uh, yeah. So, that is attributes. All right. Still, there is one recipient ready. All right. These are good messages. Okay. So, do you see an error? I, I want to show the linter. Okay. It is here. So, what it says is text input is expecting a string to message and message, right. So, now you see here, so when you, when somebody types in something to test, we have told Elm that recipient ready, like in the recipient field, recipient ready is the message. But how does it give you the actual content? So, right now it does not know how to do it. So, this has to be, it has to hold a string. So, that string is the actual content which user typed in. And we can extend the same to message ready as well. So, so this, so now there are no errors. So, this is fine. So, now let us see how, how this, this would have changed. Okay. So, you get something. So, you can specify the CSS in your Elm code or you can uh, actually embed Elm on, on an existing HTML stuff and you can refer the CSS outside. So, for this one, I am referring the CSS outside. outside. So, I will push this into Heroku, then you will actually see the uh, all the styling and other things. So, this is there. Now, let me send something test 1. I do not think I will get anything. So, and let us see the history what happened. So, if you would see the, so we are all these messages are coming as we as I type, but your model is not getting changed, it is still empty. That is because your update function it does not do anything, right. So, again I will copy the update function. So, here is my update. I wanted to do one by one, but I think for the sake of time, I am just copying the entire thing. It is wrong here. Two lines what is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just copied the entire thing. Fine, there are another three. Not find the variable notify response. All right. So that's what we missed. So now, now what does notify do? Notify is like when user clicks on a button, right? But then we give that to the runtime. Runtime makes the API call. It receives a response, and then we should know when the response comes in. So that's another message. So we need a message for notify response. And I will just fast forward. So, this actually has to be of the type result error and it should be your notification response body. This should be braces. Is it notifi notify response body? All right. So, now it looks like everything is wired in. Now, I will see, go here, let us see test 2. I do not know, sometime I need to start it again. Okay. Hopefully, I am still connected. Let me just refresh. All right. You got it. So now let us push this on to status. Let us see what all I did. Let her minus you.
All right. So, let it while this is going through, we will get back to this one. So, what we really saw was I just took a shortcut in the sense I pulled in all the update together, all the view together. You can actually see the everything in action if you build do one by one, like do only notify, then oh no, first we had we, what we saw was our model was not updated, irrespective of I am typing something, the recipient name, the message was not updated, handling only those two. Then if you click the button, nothing will happen, then handle the button, then next is you will not see the response coming and updating it. So, you can do it step by step, I just short circuited everything by pulling everything together. So, but ultimately this is what we did. So, the analysis is okay, the thought process goes like what's, what's our model, so what are the things, what, are the, what is the data that we need. So, we, we wanted a recipient message status in the center, we know what API we are calling, what, what, what the expectations are and what we need to display, right. The next step is the view. So, the view, we had the view function, model forms an input and it has to produce something with, which has all these HTML controls in and which generates these messages like when you, when somebody types on the username field, it, send, it sends, okay, it's ready, okay, uh, it sends one message like recipient ready, message ready, another one is actual notify, right. So, this understanding, what are the messages that are needed comes to arriving what messages, what are the types that we need to define. So, we need to define recipient set and we, we call it the recipient ready I guess, so whatever it is, recipient set, message set, notify and the notify response. And finally, comes to update. So, update has several blocks, it has to handle each of the message. So, the first is recipient set, yeah, it gave you back a no op command, like I do not want to do anything, I just have to update my model. Next is the message set, I just want, I do not want to run any command, I just want to update my model and this is the actual command notify, here I send the HTTP command, like do an HTTP post on a particular URL which a particular body and all those things. And it updated the model to show that notifying, that is progress information. And finally, when the response came, I do not want to run any more command, it gave me the new status. Right. So, that is pretty much it. So, now I can take any questions or I have some more things to talk about in terms of how do you, so this is a very simplistic thing, but in a normal UI or normal production, if you want to do it for your production, you will have multiple components. For example, in, in this case, in this case itself, like you know the, how you identify a user is one of the component, the initial log, you can assume there is a login page, right now I do not have a password, so I just have a user ID. Then the actual sending part is another component, then actual place where you display the messages received is another component or maybe it contains multiple sub components and we need to stitch all this together to build a final UI. So, let me show you that first and then I will take you through the how, the, what, you know, it is, it is kind of pretty straightforward like how do you pull in these components and how do you define your, what happens to your messages. What happens to your model? How do you map from a components message to your own message? Those, those kind of things. Uh, can you show me uh, the code that you did where you were using the command message to make the call and make that? I'll show you. I'll show you. I just quickly just want to deploy this guy so that I can show you what we did. Right. Apps, my notifications. Deploy. All right. So now these apps are getting deployed. I'll show you the code. Yes. Sorry. So you wanted to know the code, which or click of the button, what happened, right? So let's say. So this is. To mirror. All right. So let me increase the font size a bit. All right. So this is the function which generated that button code. So action button. This is the CSS class actually, and this is the message. We defined a message called notify, right? 
Now, this is uh, defined in send utils. So, action button, or is it action button? Yeah. So, what it is, the button, the class is the CSS ID, on click, I want to send this message and the text is sent. So, that is what the UI element, view part of it, right. So, what essentially this means is, if somebody clicks on it, update function will get a message, the notify message it will get. So, we need to go and look at how does update function handle notify, so this part of it, right. So, it gets a message, it gets a corresponding model, yes, it is notify. Probably I should make, should have made it more readable by using a Latin, but anyway, it's okay. So, this needs to return a tuple of updated model and a command, right. So, updated model is, yeah, I am using the same model, I am updating this field to say it is just notifying a particular recipient. So, that is what you saw when I click on that button, like notifying JS, to show that. And the next is the actual command. So, what it says is, send this HTTP request and the first parameter is how do I, what is the message that it should send once the response comes back, right. And this message type is result, it could be an error or it could be a actual response body, yeah. The next is the actual HTTP request. Now in the HTTP request, this in this case it is a post and this is the URL, so what I am, well, the URL on which I am posting. The next is the actual body. In this case, it is a JSON structure that I need to send. And so, I have a function which uh, takes the message and sender and creates, gives me back the JSON string. And the final third one is, once the response come, how do I, it will be a JSON content, how do I decode into my struct or, or record? So, notify response decoder. So, the important thing is to defining the, this is what we updated to say that, okay, it has two fields and I have, I have a notify response body. So, that is it. So, this is the command which was sent. Now, Elm runtime converts into a task and then it will run the task and uh, uh, once the response comes back, it will send you back the notify response with either a success or a fail. Any more questions? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. We will we'll go through all the things. So, this is the sending the notification, right? Then notify response comes back. It is an okay. That means it is successful. In, if it is successful, it will have the response body and the response body is nothing but your notify response body structure that which has a status and client ID, right. So, here it says, okay, so now I need to update my model to say that uh, uh, to modify the status message, right. So, if it is status is true, that means it is successful. So, actually the, the semantics is that so, this status will indicate whether it's, it false means it, uh, the user is not connected. If it is true, means it is successful. So, if it is true, then I will say message sent. If it is not, I will say message not delivered and uh, client is not connected or, or the recipient is not connected. In case it is an error, then we show that this network error or whatever the HTTP error it is. There is a mapping to the string and it shows that error. And here is the way how do you update the model for whenever user types in something, like message ready means it will set the message. So, your model gets updated incrementally. So, do I have it? So, if you see here, first the model has only recipient J, now J A, finally S, then T, blah, 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 all those things and then finally notify, notify response, so it is just a message sent, whatever it is, all right. Any more questions? I think we have 10 more minutes. Uh, if you have an existing JavaScript library, mm -hmm. if you are using ports in Elm, can you show how you can connect to JavaScript? Uh, I don't have a sample code for the ports. Uh, okay, so let, I'll, yeah, I don't have a sample code to show, but it is done through subscription. So, you can, uh, for example, in this notify code, right, okay. Let me, let me go to the component thing, then I will cover the subscriptions. So, then we will talk about the ports as well. So, let us go back here, fine. All right. So, this is, let this is the, this is the overall application which, which combines all these three together, right. So, let us see how do you, how does it look like. I did not realize last time that when I was doing the browser thing, 
All right, so it would have, hopefully it would have deployed the newer version. Before that, I want to show on. background image is taking it taking while to load ah, okay so this is what we built few minutes back right and now this is a consolidated ui so i'm going to this i'll say yeah just connect no, apparently it does not deploy the new one all right uh, no uh, that's in a different branch so <laughs> so probably i have to Yeah, this is fine. All right. Just a second. We'll get up and running. So check out. I don't have anything. All right, so let me try redeploying this uh, notify deploy branch after that. Stop. No, that was the previous one. The 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 full complete UI is still in another project, which this should be there. unless something is broken. Oh yeah, it's okay. So just mashing up of all three together. So you have a send message here and the messages over here. So now, so this, this is the sender which we built, right? So let's say test three. I should see here, yeah, test three. All right, so how did, so in this case, you saw the user connection first and then this send part and this uh, receiving part, right? So, so now I'll go through this notify part. So here, so what the difference is, so your messages notify and there's a tick that will talk about it later and then there's a user login and send info. So the user login is actually from so what we need is, those are the tabs, user and send. These are the two modules. So first let's talk about user. So this has only a view for login, like specific, enter the username, user ready. It contains a view, it contains a model and the message, there's no update function over here, right? So now you come here. So you need to wrap that uh, message into your own message structure. So this is user login is your type which contains the actual user message and then Similarly, for the send module, send component, you, you wrap the messages into your own messages. Same thing for model. So you have a user info, users model, notify data, sends model. So essentially, those are the two steps. Like in your message, you should wrap your components message. In your model, you should wrap your components model. After this, the next important thing is update and view function. So let's look at update. So notify and tick is this is defined locally in issues. So user login, this comes from a different component, right, in this case. So we have a user message over here. And in this case, I'm doing something where uh, I'm updating the model and sender, that's nothing, that's all. It's, it's essentially not doing any commands or anything like that. But if you look at the send message, that is when somebody clicked on the send button, it comes here. It, it is calling the sends update method. So if you see here, it's a new model because send has an update. I didn't show you the send. 
this is what we coded up few minutes back. So it has its own view, uh, its own view, which does everything, its own update. Yeah, it's a pretty long update. Notify, notify response, message, this is what we, we saw a few minutes back. So it's delegating the update to sends update method. But you would have noticed that in send, your update returns you a model and a command wrapped with, with the type parameter of the message for defined in the send module, not in the main one. So here, you need to map it. So you'll say command dot map, this is the users, you map wrap it into your own, otherwise any compilation will fail. So essentially what it means is delegate your updates, your component, and map the messages back to your main message. And it's the same principle for view as well. So if you have view, Okay, it's pretty, okay, it's user connected view model view, so let me go to user connected view. So it's, uh, I'm just calling send view, and I'm calling notify view. So these are the, send view comes from a different model, notify view comes from a different model. That's, that's pretty much it. And send view, if you see here, view returns an HTML message, but sends view will return an HTML send message. So you need to map the message over here to your own message sending. So, and I don't know, I don't know to repeat it like, I just did all these things and then resolved all the compilation error and it just worked. I didn't, I didn't have to troubleshoot or anything, yeah. Hmm. No, no, it's the state, it's the model, right? So essentially, if you go back to your update function, so is this notify response your response on the HTTP call. That comes into update function, uh, and update function takes a current model as an input, and spits out a new model and another command. It may be no op, or it may be a valid command. Now, this updated model goes to the view function, so Elm runtime takes this updated model, calls the view function, and view function decides, oh, this is a new model, as per this new model, my view has to be like this. It gives the DOM. Then the runtime does all the virtual DOM comparison and applies the required changes onto the actual, uh, actual DOM, which gets reflected in the browser. I haven't worked on React, I think there are a few others who have worked on React, but what I read about it, Redux, the architecture is same as Elm. Yeah. It's, it's from Elm, yeah. Based on who you talk to, based on L more inspired from L. <laughs> okay, so essentially the com combination, right? The combining L components. So you need to have a message. You need to combine the model, and finally delegate view and update to the components. Of course, you need to map the messages. Your component message to your own message. Your uh, yeah, in both the view as well as in the update. All right, and I wanted to show the subscription. There is Elm test. Yeah, I haven't used it much though. So beauty of static. So <laughs> most of the time you spend in resolving compilation errors, and then it just works. Yeah. Of course, there are even now like the kind of errors that you get are let's say you're depending on an API. You expect your see see here. Okay, it's not mirroring. Yeah. So you expect your uh, response, right? Or is it? Yeah, message center your uh, raw message that is coming in. Or if I go to send here, there will be notify response body. Now, say API has changed; it no longer sending those two fields. I mean, okay, those kind of runtime errors are unavoidable, but. Whatever you are, whatever is in your control, it will catch all of the errors at the compile time.
All right, and this I have given the repos which has this code, like the actual service which is using, and both the com combined app as well as just the sender part. That's and any other questions before we? Yeah, I think we are not on time. Forty-five minutes. Yeah. What do you see as a short for Wednesday? Okay. Right now, okay. I'm probably in another session. Like. Uh, it generates the entire, it compiles into JavaScript, right? So, in it, when you when you make, okay, I'll show you this, that will be better. It packages the entire Elm run time. Every time you make and create a something.js. So, for example, in this one, I can say Elm hyphen make uh, source notify dot L minus minus output notify dot js all right and this notify dot js is what is embedded in a html file so if you see here so script source notify dot js and this is how you embed elm in your so this is in this in this case this entire page is that but typically let's say how you most of the cases where you start is you have already have a big application or i doubt whether anybody Builds fully Elm-based ground ground-up application. At least from an adoption point of view, it is like try out in a very small part of your application and see how it is going. So, like for example, your in our case, like it's a login page alone, or maybe some small thing which is on the right hand side corner of your web page, whatever it is. So, you embed and the suggestion also is to embed Elm into an existing JavaScript application, not the other way. So, when you do that, let's say you do it in two different places. Then what happens is the entire browser load two instances of Elm realm time, so that's there is no optimization around it. And second is, irrespective of what you use. So in this case, this is a very simple one. You are using only probably HTTP attribute, HTTP event, and the basic HTML. But the the generated JavaScript will be the entire Elm whatever entire the corresponding implementation for the entire Elm stack. So the optimization, I think, in progress or in wait, in wait are like irrespective of how many times you are embedding Elm, have only one run time, and uh, depending on what you use, like based on that, only that much uh, generated code gets loaded onto it. So those are now it is 0 0.18. I don't know whenever next time happens, those optimizations are in place. The next is. <coughs> What else? Though I think those are all the those two are what I can think of on top of my head. And there are certain runtime error scenarios, um, uh, which one of them I talked about, like the we are depending on other APIs and that get changed. There are few more cheat sheets, like, like three or four scenarios where again it's like all external dependencies. So it's not completely like it'll just uh, if it compiles it'll work minus these four scenarios. So those 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 are the shortfalls I can think of. And some people doesn't like like uh, if it is compiling into JavaScript, why should why shouldn't we use JavaScript directly? But then why shouldn't we use machine learn language directory, assembly directories, or bytecode directly is another answer to that. So <laughs> anything else? So there is a published benchmarking, I don't have a link handy, which, uh, which says it's, it claims it's much better than Angular and it comes second, I don't know what is top and React is even further down. So from a performance point of view, it's, it's again the same principle like virtual DOM difference and applying, that's the same principle. So one of the scenarios were in which uh, Elm is recommended is where you want your DOM updates to be faster and uh, you know performance to be one of the criteria. But again, it depends on whether you are embedding it in small part, you are building everything, uh, entire application based on Elm and all those kind of things. But if if you ultimately if you choose to have Elm embedded in multiple parts of your uh, application it is reported to be really slowing down the browser because it's have multiple run times loaded. And that's the trigger for these optimizations around uh, have only one run time, don't generate the, 
entire end stack, but based on what you what what is really used, all those optimizations. Once probably all those are in place, it will be much better. Unless you generate the JavaScript and uh, use Node.js, but it is only for UI. It's being built only for UI. It's not for backend. So I think there's that Node.js. Uh, People have built it because ultimately it's JavaScript code which is generated. So if you can make it work with Node, it's. But this language is for building web UIs. It's not for running backend services. Only with no native. Pardon? Only web. Oh, no, no native. Only web. Only, only H web, yeah. Uh, I have a special case uh, mm. which I'm looking at is we have a dashboard mm -hmm. and we have about uh, 20 to 30 uh, widgets being shown mm -hmm. on a single page. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of timers being shown on that. Mm -hmm. We currently facing a problem with the Sencha framework. Mm -hmm. Timers are time to auto. Mm -hmm. That's a hard <laughs> question. <laughs> I, do, I can't give an yes or no answer, right? I mean, with this information, of course. Uh, the M thing, it has a global state. So if you make it for the whole company state of everything, your global state will be like big. And at each time you update something, there's going to be a lot of updates. So it's going to be, you have to program a lot of updates. And it's going to cause you some trouble, but it will be done. Actually, I have a code that written using from M from start for the whole dashboard. Maybe I can show you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>